Okay, converge or diverge, we have the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the nth power over n factorial in the parentheses and then to the second power. Imagine if we do not have the second power right here. This is actually pretty easy because it's divergent. Because n to the nth power divided by n factorial, that will go to infinity, since n to the n is much bigger than just n factorial, right? But this time, the n factorial is not by itself. It's with the second power, so it brings its cousin with it, that kind of thing. Anyway, so what can we do to test out if this series converges or not? Well, a hint is, if you see n in the exponent, you should use the ratio test, try it. And especially if you also see the factorial, you should definitely try to use the ratio test, right? One or the other, and in this case, we're both. So let's go ahead and try the ratio test. And what it says is that we will have to first take the limit as n goes to infinity. And I'll just write down as n goes to infinity. You don't have to write down the LIM every single time. This is just as legit as long as you show your work, you know, neatly, properly, all that stuff. And then we'll do all the algebra work right here, right? So the theory is that we will first open the absolute value. And the first thing we want to put down is the AM plus 1. Namely, this is your a n, just go ahead and change all the n's to n plus 1. That's the deal. So I see this n, it becomes n plus 1. Put a parenthesis around it. And then this power becomes n plus 1 as well. And then we will divide this by, let's open the parentheses. And this n, it becomes n plus 1. Put a parentheses, and then we have that factorial. And then to the second power. This is a n plus 1. And we multiply by the reciprocal of a n. This is your a n. So just take this, flip that, right? So of course, we'll just have n factorial and then square over n to the n's power, like that. So this is pretty much a n plus 1 over a n. But it's easier to look at a n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. Now, look at this part and then just break down the power and also break apart the bigger exponent power and then the factorial like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is of course take care of this business. We have this guy, so I will just use a blue pen first. This right here, because the power is n plus 1, I can write the base n plus 1 and then raise to the nth power first and then times by base again n plus 1 raised to the first power like that, all right? And now, break down the factorial. This is the bigger factorial. n plus 1 factorial is uh, going to be n plus 1. You write down whatever you have inside first. And then the next thing is n. And then the next one, we know it's going to be n minus 1, and so on, so on, up to 3 to 1, like that. But this part is just n factorial. So you can just go ahead and erase that and put down the factorial like that. However, don't forget, we still have the second power. So keep a parenthesis, raise that to a second power, right? And because we just have a multiplication inside, I can put the power here and the power here. So in another word, we will have n plus 1 square times n factorial square. Now what? Well, cancel things out. This is the best part. n factorial square, this n factorial square, these are gone now. Haha. -ha. This n to the n stays for now. And, oh, you see we have n plus 1 to the first power. This is n plus 1 to the second power. So we can cancel this with one of these out. So we have a 1 right here, all right? And that's pretty much what we can do in terms of the algebraic simplification. So I'll put on equal sign because so far it's just algebra, right? And I'm going to put things down. And maybe you want to reduce this and that, but you don't need to because... I notice that I have the nth power here, likewise I have the nth power here. In fact, I'm going to put them together, all right? So I will write this down as the following. n plus 1 to the nth power over n to the n. And then this is still in the denominator, but let me write it as multiplied by 1 over n plus 1, like this. And notice that I did not put down the absolute value because the input is just positive, so the absolute value doesn't matter, right? Okay, so now what? Well, if you look at this carefully, both of them have the nth power, so you can just like put
put the inside together and then raise to the nth power, right? And furthermore, I'm going to do the following. n over n is 1. And then I will say plus 1 over n, and then raise to the nth power, right? So once again, if you just put the n on the outside, and then you do n over n, which is 1, plus 1 over n like that. And then multiply by this guy, 1 over n plus 1. Now, we are taking a limit. Do we recognize as n goes to infinity, what do we get from here? This is going to be e, isn't it? And here is the deal. We are just going to take a limit of a product of two things. And this is finite, right? And we know this has a limit. Likewise, this has a limit as well. Therefore, we can just go ahead and say the limit of this times the limit of that. The limit of this, this is e. And the limit of this, this is 0 as n goes to infinity, right? So altogether, we can say this is going to be approaching to, I'm using an arrow because I'm taking a limit. This is going to approach to e times 0. Of course, this is going to be 0 at the end. And now what? Well, this is the limit that we get when we are using the ratio test. This is 0, and you have to remember which number you are trying to use to compare with. In the ratio test situation, you are trying to look at if this limit is less than 1 or bigger than 1. All right? If this is exactly 1, then the ratio test is useless. It's unfortunately not helpful. But it's 0, so I can say 0 is less than 1, and we can draw a conclusion. If we have this limit to be less than 1, that means the original series converges. All right? So be careful. Yes, you can get a limit, but you have to know which number are we using to compare them with. All right? Because you also have the limit comparison test and things like that. Anyway, once we have this, of course, we are done. So here is my conclusion. I will just say the original series as n goes from 1 to infinity, this is 1 to infinity of n to the nth power over n factorial to the second power. This right here converges, and the reason is because we use the ratio test. So this is the conclusion. Now, this is the icing on the cake, right? So far, we only know this right here converges. But unfortunately, we don't know what this is going to converge to, right? Converge to what? I don't know, right? Unfortunately, for the series, we don't know. And here is the note, right? Well, when we say this series converges, that means the limit of the an terms right here, this has to be going to zero, right? So if you're just talking about the limit of the an terms like that, so the limit as n goes to infinity of just this expression, n to the nth power over n factorial square like this. This is the little bonus, that kind of thing. We know this right here has to be equal to zero because we know that the series converges, right? So be careful with your notation and things like that, because we know the series converges. That means we have to have this, the nth term, right, go to zero. Because the test for divergence says, if the limit of this doesn't go to zero, then the series will diverge. And this is the converge of that statement. So if you are just encountering this limit question, right? This limit question, and if you don't want to work out any kind of the uh, definition or whatsoever, uh, whatever you want to do with this limit, what you can do is you can do the ratio test and all that. If this is the question by itself, you can say this is equal to zero because the series version converges by the ratio test, right? And that's it.